Hi, welcome to our video lecture. Today we're going to be talking about feedback control in Python. More specifically, we're going to be using a tool called Collimator, which is a Simulink-like tool that lets you build block diagrams and have custom Python coding in it. But the block diagrams and this nice graphical user interface allows you to do uh, a lot of complex modeling um, but keeping it pretty simple and user friendly. Specifically today we're going to talk about model identification. We're going to do a step test so that we can get parameters for controller tuning and we're going to imp implement a cascade control loop using a proportional integral derivative control and actually we're going to just use proportional and integral control. All right in our previous video lecture we talked about tuning a controller when we knew the uh, exact process model. So specifically we were trying to, to control flow rate. So we first measured our flow rate using a flow transmitter and a we sent that measured signal to a flow controller, gave this a set point, so a flow set point, and then that we had a PID algorithm built into that flow loop controller which would calculate the recommended valve position to give us the uh, flow rate set point that we desired. Today we're going to talk about doing what's something called cascade control. So let's say that instead of just controlling the flow, we actually want to control like a liquid level in a tank. So we've, we've in a previous lecture we've built a dynamic simulation model of a gravity drained tank. So now let's assume that we want to measure the level in the tank with a level transmitter and we want to give a this tank a specific set point. So here is our level set point. Let's say we want to control the tank level at a height of let's say 8 meters. We can do that with a level controller. So that level controller will take in the measured value from our level transmitter, it'll take in our set point, it'll do a comparison. So now uh, if we want our manipulated variable in this process to be our flow rate, or rather our flow rate set point, we can connect this controller so that instead of arbitrarily deciding what our flow rate set point should be, we can uh, close this loop and we can say give me whatever flow rate is going to help me to achieve this level. So now rather than being valve position being our decision variable or uh, flow rate set point being our decision variable, now we want our decision variable to, be, variable to be the level set point. So this is called cascade control. When we have a master controller, in this case this level controller, that calculates as a manipulated variable the set point of another controller. So this one would be known as the slave controller. So the level controller is trying to achieve a certain level. It tells this slave controller or this flow controller what to do. All right, uh, so let's go to our dynamic model of the system. We're going to go to collimator.ai, log into our model. This is where we left off in the last video lecture. So if you wanted to go back and see where all this came from, uh, you can go to the description in this video and, and click on the last video and you'll know where all this came from. So right now uh, we've, we've got this set up so that if we change the flow rate set point, this is the inlet flow rate set point, that goes to this error calculation which compares the difference between our flow rate set point and our actual measured flow rate from this uh, transfer function model. This calculates what our valve position should be that goes to the transfer function that calculates our actual flow rate that's fed into our process. Our process is a nonlinear dynamic function that we defined using this custom Python code. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a second controller to determine what this level or this flow rate set point should be. So uh, first what we're going to do is we want to do some model identification. Specifically we wanted to know the relationship of our flow rate set point and the impact that that would have on our tank level or this H parameter. So we're going to do a step test. So now we're going to we're going to include everything that you see here is going to be a part of our system. So we're going to assume that this flow controller is now just a part of our system, that it's just automatically doing its thing because we've defined a PID controller and giving this a particular control law. So we're just going to assume that this is part of our system with an input on what this flow rate set point is. So I sort of I know something about the dynamics of this system. They're quite a bit slower than we've experienced with the flow uh, dynamics. So we're going to give our system a simulation time of 200 minutes. We want to first get our system to a steady state and then we want to make a step change and let it get to that next steady state. 
So I'm going to make a step change in our flow controller set point at time 100 minutes, so halfway through our total simulation time. I'm going to start off with a flow set point of 8. Uh, this is in cubic meters per minute. These are the units that we've been using for our simulation. I'm going to do a step test from 8 to 10. And we're going to go and gather some information from this system. So my simulation has run, and now we're just waiting. There's a little bit of a lag between column meter server and uh, outputting this data back out to us. So here at time t equals 100 minutes, we do make this set point change. And now let's go look at the impact that this has on our tank height. So we get up to a steady state, pretty close to a steady state tank height of about 6.21 or 6.22. And then we make this step change, so our level goes up. Our level goes up to about 9.7. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to define an approximate transfer function model representing this process. It really our process is nonlinear and it's a tiny bit more complicated than a simple linear first order transfer function. But for the sake of some simple and robust controller tuning, we're going to approximate our system um, as a first order transfer function. So if you recall from our last video lecture, uh, actually two video lectures ago, we talked about what a transfer function is. So it's something that has a gain, which is a measure of the change in our output to the change in our input. So in this case, our output is our tank height and our input is this flow rate set point. So I have uh, taken the liberty of creating this little Excel sheet. So here we want to document what our flow set point is. So this is our input. And this is our output information here. So our flow rate set point was 8 cubic meters per minute before the step change. And then after the step change, it's 10 cubic meters per minute. Our tank level goes from, um, it's at 6.22 before the step change. And then after we reach our new steady state, it's at, let's call it 9.71. So here before we have 6.22 is our level, and then after we have 9.71. All right, uh, if we are approximating our system as a first order transfer function, that means that um, approximately one time constant into our process, we would see a change of about 0.632 between our two different output levels. So I've defined this other variable, the level after one time constant, and it should look something like this. It's going to be our level 1 plus 0 0.632 multiplied by this difference in our two steady state levels. So we want to know about how long does it take our process to get to a level of about 0.842. And that will be our approximate first order time constant. So I'll go back to my simulation model. Remember that number we're looking for is 8.42. So I'm going to go back here to my output variable and I'm going to hover over the time here that it takes. I'm going to look for the point when we have a level of about 0.8, sorry, 8.42. All right, that occurs at 122 minutes. So we made the step change at 100 minutes. So this gives me a time constant of, let's call it 22 and a half minutes. So I go back to my spreadsheet. So now I have identified my process time constant to be about 22.5 minutes. My process gain, I can calculate now from my step test. That is going to be the change in, oops, I need an equal sign here. So that is the change in my output divided by the change in my input. All right, so I have a process gain of 1.745, and that means for every meter cube per minute that I change the flow, I should expect to see roughly a change in level of about 1.745. Um, all right, we introduced some tuning rules in our last video, and let's go revisit those tuning rules. So once we have identified our process gain, which we just did, and our process time constant, we can get a, a 
controller proportional gain using this formula, tau over k times tau c. So tau is our process time constant, k is our process gain, tau c is our desired controller time constant. So if we have a controller time constant that's less than 22.5, that means we want our controller to speed up this process to help it reach its set point or its new steady state value faster than it would naturally. Um, we Once we have our k sub p, we can calculate our k sub i, which is our controller integral gain, which is equal to k sub p over tau, which tau is our process time constant. All right, so we're going to be using these formulas now. So our natural process time constant is about 22 and a half minutes, and we that's pretty slow. So we want to speed this up. I'm going to give it a time constant of, let's say, uh, five minutes here. So this five is going to give us uh, some particular controller tuning. So I calculate my k sub p uh, as that's equal to tau over k times tau c. So that gives us a controller proportional gain of about 2.6 and our controller integral gain is now k sub p divided by tau. Alright, so these are now for this IMC tuning with a desired controller time constant of 5 minutes. We have k sub p is equal to 2.6 and k sub i is equal to 0 0.114 or 5, 0 0.115, let's go with that. Okay, so now back to our collimator model. So now we want to go closed loop here, which means we want to try and control our level set point here. So first I need to add an error block, and in collimator the best tool for that is this adder block. So I'm going to flip this thing horizontally. I want to have this block compute our set point minus our measured value. So I'm going to go and toggle this to be a minus sign. I'm going to take our measured value of our height or our level. So um, I'm going to delete this. We're no longer going to determine arbitrarily the set point for our flow controller, but rather we are going to have our flow controller set point come from our level controller. All right, so I've got a new step function here. I'm going to call this level set point and I'm gonna right click and flip this horizontally alright let's let's test how our controller works let's go with a step time of 100 minutes again let's start this let's say we're gonna try and control our level to be 6 and let's have it go to 10 is our end value I want to be able to plot this so now we need another PID controller and in this PID controller is where we enter our controller tuning parameters. And again, we're going with a simple PI controller. So from those IMC tuning relationships, if you recall, we got K sub P is a 2.6, K sub I is 0 0.115. We do not have any derivative control action. Um, we're just we're not going to worry about that. Usually, a PI controller is pretty robust and not particularly sensitive to noise. All right, so now our, we give us a level set point, we calculate our error, we feed that error to our PID controller, um, which will now tell us what should our level set point be. Um, I'm going to give this PID controller a name, and I'm going to call this QN. And this is, oh, I can't use that name. Sorry, I'm going to give this QN set point. All right, so that's just a reminder this is going to give us our level set point which feeds into this other level controller. All right, so now we have these two levels of control. We've achieved a cascade control with a particular tuning. So let's see how this works. And what we're going to want to see is that our our level changes in a quick way from a, a level of 6 meters to a level of 10 meters. So we've set a controller time constant of 5 minutes. So hopefully we have sped up this process and we see that our level can respond a little bit quicker here. All right, we're waiting for the data to populate. So here, here's my height set point. So we do see, we do first get to a level of close to six and then we make this step change. And here we're getting to a level of very close to 10. Let's just 
put our level set point on that same plot. Okay, there's our level set point. I'm going to add this to my measurement of height or level. So you can see we have some nice set point tracking here. Let's try and speed this up a little bit. So here you can see we're probably getting to, a, you know, about, this is somewhat arbitrary. This just asymptotically approaches our set point. But when these two start to converge, let's say we're 15 minutes out, um, we do have... Again, this is about one time constant. You can see that does happen at around uh, four or five minutes. So let's see if we can speed this up and give this a little bit more aggressive tuning. So let's change our desired controller time constant to one minute. Let's make this super aggressive. All right, so that gives us bigger gains here. So we're going to be looking at a proportional gain of about 12.9 and an integral gain of about 0.57. So I'll go back to my collimator model and I'm going to update my tuning here. Let's just look at what happens when we get a little more aggressive. All right, so now I hit go. Running the model again. Okay, so now, yeah, you do see that we reach that new level faster. This comes at a cost, however, of a more aggressive change in our flow rate. So here we're getting our flow rate uh, that is coming from this controller up to about 44 cubic meters per minute, actually up to 50 there for a moment. So, so we might not actually have a system that can achieve this high of a flow rate. Um, however, I do want to go ahead and wrap up this lesson. So here we've introduced... How do you do a step test in your system so that you can get control parameters? Identify You start out by identifying some really simple constants if you are approximating your system as a, a linear first order uh, transfer function. Um, and then we that helped us to get our controller tuning and then we did cascade control. So now we have our level controller calculates the flow rate set point that we need and then our flow rate set point or our flow controller then calculates the valve position that we need so ultimately we are controlling uh, our tank level using that valve position as our final control element